it's me, Alex, and today we're making candles for charity. <laughs> I have assembled the Avengers here. We have Tiasha with her brand new haircut. Yeah! Leave a comment below and tell her how good she looks. We have Millie who has brown hair now and not pink. <laughs> we have Liv and Lucy who has red hair and not blonde. We have Sam who has long hair and not short. And we have my husband who still has red hair like always. <laughs> <laughs> we are hosting a big charity fundraiser on Saturday the 18th of January in Chatswood, Sydney. Yes! And we're making handmade candles that we can sell at the fundraiser. Mm. So, uh, basically this is a quick video, no fancy flashy editing or anything like that all us little working bees are gonna go outside we're gonna be making candles all day you're gonna see a big time lapse of us doing it we'll stop and tell you what we're doing along the way we'll tell you the fragrances and the sizes and how much they're gonna cost and uh, you can click the link below to see where the event is happening and uh, you can come along pick up candles get clothing buy some baked goods we're gonna be baking things we're gonna be taking pictures with you guys yeah! and everything. all the money that we raise is going to the New South Wales bushfire relief and bushfire relief around Australia because even though we're in New South Wales, there's a lot of other states that are burning and they need our help I too. I think we're all burning. We're all burning. We're all Everywhere burning. around the whole country is burning. Mm. So, uh, we're going to be asking you guys your opinions about how you want to see the funds sort of distributed throughout Australia. We're thinking wildlife, it needs to go to the firefighters, mm. it needs to go to the victims of the fire. Mm. So, this is a big community effort. I'm excited to meet you guys at the event. You guys will get to meet my beautiful friends and uh, <laughs> you'll get to buy our candles. So Yay! with that, let us head outside and get to making and let the shenanigans let begin! Let the shenanigans <laughs> begin! Let's get waxy. <laughs> waxy. Let's get waxy. Wax on, wax off. Let us begin. So we are unpacking our small oh, candles. Gosh. These are little votive candles. They're pink on the outside. These are all going to be probably about $10 at the event. We have over 200 of them, I'm pretty sure. They are, look, look how cute they are. Aren't they adorable? Okay, next up guys, we have our second type of candle, which is the glorious, the incredible, the iridescent, beautiful medium-sized candle. Now these are definitely my favorite but we don't have a huge amount of these jars. These are going to be like limited edition so if you're obsessed with these and you're coming to the event I'm assuming these will probably sell out first. These are my favorites. We couldn't get very many of these jars. They are harder to come by than the clear ones but look aren't they glorious. We're gonna pour all of these first and then we'll move on to the large ones later. I think this is so cool and so on brand. And wait until you find out what fragrance I'm putting in it. You're gonna die, you're gonna die. Speaking of fragrance, so my little uh, mastermind Lucy over here considers oh herself a bit of a fragrance connoisseur. Is I, that true? I take it back immediately. Oh, okay. My old job, I worked in beauty and I did some fragrance training. I did some fragrance training. I did some fragrance training. So you're an expert. <laughs> well, you're an expert. Watch me get all of it wrong and immediately be like, and like, mm, this is a cocooning fragrance with like subtle hints of like pink peppercorn, like that. She's so, an expert. What I did I tell you? What did I say? <laughs> She's an expert. And like, this is an aquatic floral actually, um, so it's really bright and fresh, but you'll have to be careful about those top notes because they'll just dissipate really. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> it's great. I'm really good at playing the part of a giant wanker. Sorry. That's, does a wanker get you in trouble on That's YouTube.com? Okay. That's fine. We, we can we, edit that out. We'll bleep um, it. I'm a big numpty. Oh, the jars look so pretty. Flies <laughs> Hide her modesty. <laughs> the plan is, guys, we have four fragrances. So I'm gonna get Lucy to try and figure out what she thinks it is. Wow. wow. Okay. Okay. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna just tip it into the cap right. a little bit because otherwise, if you smell the whole bottle, it's overwhelming. It's like wine. Maple syrup. Right? <gasps> Caramel? Maple syrup? Maple syrup. It's like a caramel or a maple syrup. Well, this one is butterscotch pudding. Okay. But that's what this company calls it. But when I smell that, I smell maple syrup. Maple syrup. That's yeah. what I smell. Next up. I want to Next up, she's that. smelling this yeah. fragrance. <laughs> Ready? Oh, yeah. Oh no, I don't know what the name of this fruit is. <laughs> is it, is it pear? 
like a watermelon or a pear. Are you gonna lock it in, Eddie? Are we locking in the hands up? Do you wanna phone a friend? Grand Daniel, please help me. It smells in a nice way. It's like quite soapy. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It smells really clean. Do you want me to tell you? Yes, You're please. gonna be like, oh my god, obviously. I'm gonna be, no, oh, I'm gonna I can stop. smell it from here. All right, just tell me. Peach. Oh, far out. <laughs> of course. Wow, I truly have truly played myself and embarrassed myself. Peach, sweetie, I'm so sorry. Real dumb nose energy. Today, this wasn't ladies. supposed to be a self hating exercise. <laughs> this isn't a self hating exercise. You're spiraling down. Like, I'm spiraling. Okay, what about this one? This is this is our this number is, one bestseller. This is the. The flavor that Alex's wedding candles were. Yeah, so we made uh, wedding can oh, candles oh to give out at our wedding. <gasps> That's yeah. so cute! They yeah. were amazing. Oh, Lucy, you're about to find out what my what bathroom smells like after I do a poop. <laughs> oh, yeah. Is this the coconut and lime one? Coconut and lime. Yeah. Got it in one. Congratulations. Sorry, I cheated. I watched Sam's video and I was like, okay, I know that coconut and lime exists in the fragrance. It's lovely. Pretty this nice. one, actually, I'm an idiot. Every time I pick these up, I say, this is my favorite. And then, no, this is my favorite. <laughs> I think I may know what this one is. Oh, so did I'll you just see? like I'll just like pretend. Wait, hang on. Oh my god, is that is that like blueberry muffin or blueberry cheesecake? Is that <laughs> what I'm detecting? Yes. Wait. Oh my god. How did you know? Thank you. Please employ me. It's, oh. You know what? That's like a hundred percent like Bath and Body Works vibes. Yeah. What was your favorite? Do you want? You can tell I liked me again the, if you need No, to. I I think I know. I liked the first one. Yeah. I like the butter yeah, butter one. Yeah, butter scotch. Like so I'm glad you said that. <laughs> okay. So if we have a look over here, now that we've done our scenting. Daniel is wicking them. They're little sticky things, and you put them on the bottom of the wick. And Millie has. Have you been putting the stickums on the bottom of the wicks? Yes. Oh, I should have filmed you doing that. Don't worry. Go back and do more. it again. There's there's another 400. <laughs> I'll unpeel these. Tiasha, this is the most complicated part, so you got to focus. Uh, now, are you guys sure you're watching? Okay. Oh, I'm, damn! No, it's not. <laughs> a Alex, why are you doing no. it that way? Is it on your head? Okay, wait. Okay, go. That does not look scientific. It's. it's it's everything's fine. There's a charm to Alex's off center candle. See? So next up, uh, Sam has taken these little paddle pop sticks and he's drilled little holes in them. Plugged them full of holes. And that is just so we can go over the top of these and yes. put them over the Thing over the candle and then you pull the wick somewhat tightish and then just like fold it over so it's like it's held in the center now the wick is centered so it's not going to be leaning off to one side see only the best quality assurance at pretty pastel candles yeah <laughs> we we want we don't want floppy wicks we want erect wicks Ew, <laughs> Sam, get your <laughs> support our charity <laughs> So guys, if you have never made candles before, you may just think that a wick is a wick and there's nothing special about a wick, but no, you're wrong. Because depending on the circumference of your jar, that affects what size wick that you need. So for these little teeny tiny jars, we have these little teeny tiny skinny little wicks. And that's because obviously with the surface area, there's not very much wax that needs to burn. But when you have a larger surface area like this one, you need a thicker wick so that there's more heat so that it burns evenly all the way around the top. Really, really big jars like this, obviously you can see it's, it's even bigger than that one. And if you want an even burn all the way across the surface, you put the two wicks and that way it's going to evenly distribute the heat because what you don't want is like a well to appear in your candle. Anyway, so we're experts. <laughs> Thanks for coming to my TED talk. So here, this is what wax looks like. If anyone's ever made candles before, you can get wax chips. You can sometimes get pellets, but we've got wax chips. So this is soy wax that we're using today. This is a vegan formula, 100% vegan soy wax. It's not like paraffin wax that emits toxic fumes. It's all natural. So we've got our soy wax. Sam's here with a big old pot. We actually got this pot from a thrift store. It wasn't very expensive, maybe like ten dollars. Like yeah, ten bucks from a thrift store. This holds a huge amount of wax. Huge. We, uh, we've got this little electric thermometer here. So it's got laser beams that shoot out of it, and uh, it's telling us right now that this is 69, 69 degrees. degrees nice. Celsius. Nice. We have Fahrenheit there for you Americans to. Enjoy and understand. Yep, there you go. 161. We're going to be putting fragrance in there now that the wax is melted. This is going to be the butterscotch pudding that we're putting in this giant batch here. So that's what all those candles on the table are. They're all going to be butterscotch pudding because I think that that's going to be the most popular. That one is the most like a Bath and Body Works candle. It's absolutely delicious. It just smells. 
Look, look what I'm dealing with. This work, this workplace environment. Look at this. <laughs> she's got, she's got a, a sword that Sam made. Make it cute. <laughs> oh my god. Someone help. Send help. So what we have to do now is we are dividing our big pot of wax into a smaller one so we can mix the fragrance. So we have here a set of scales. Uh, this. Can, can contain about 1.5 kilos of wax. So we're popping that on there, we will zero off the scales. We're gonna pour in 1.5 kilos of wax. And then what we have to do, we use a 10% ratio of wax to fragrance because we load our fragrance with as much fragrance as we can possibly put in. So our calculations are 1,620 grams of wax and 180 grams of fragrance. Let's get to it, I said. Lucy is teaching my husband how to dance. Uh, <laughs> oh no! I don't even know if I'm doing that right, like TikTok, I'm so sorry. And don't do is, this at home, kids. Yeah, this is 80 degree wax that I'm pouring towards myself. He's so. very strong. Oh my god, it smells so good! Mm. So I think I got a little bit distracted before when I was explaining to you guys about the fragrance. So basically what Sam and I always do is we load our fragrance at 10%. We, we want the candles to be uh, as strong as possible. Some companies call it like triple scented, for example, because normally when you, let's say you go to Ikea or something and you buy a candle, it might be loaded at like 3% fragrance, but that's, that's like a standard candle. But if you want the sort of candle that fills the entire house, every room with an incredible scent, you need it to be like a triple scented candle and basically what that means is it's like three percent is standard six percent is like a double scented candle and then nine percent is a triple scented candle so we kind of go between nine and ten percent fragrance so they're as strong as possible it does mean that each candle costs us a little bit more but I mean you want people to have the best candle experience possible so that's why we do it the way we do it and uh, you can hear the geese scandering behind me there oh I can't stick it to the bottom it doesn't matter the thing will dry all right yeah fucking Okay, sure, I, I can't believe it. Right <laughs> <laughs> you want to start again, babe? You I couldn't hear any. I couldn't even couldn't, hear your voice. I hope you guys could hear what I was saying. <laughs> so basically, we are doing the butterscotch fragrance is the one that we're doing the most of because I'm certain that's going to be the biggest success. Do you like it, Dan? I do. Let's inhale together. Ready? Smell my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> so now that almost all the butterscotch candles have been poured, we're going to be waiting for them to set. We're going to be filming a little video for Lucy's channel and uh, then we're going to be clearing the table and starting fresh with some different candles. This time we're using clear jars and we're doing different fragrances and we're also colouring these candles. There's going to be a very pale pink one, there'll be a pale blue one and a pale green one and each of those will have a unique fragrance. So uh, I think that you're going to have to leave us for a little while while we finish off all of these and then we'll move on. Ooh, ah. We have these little uh, dye tips and this, it looks purple. So what we're doing, we're testing because I want a peach color for the peach candle. So we just put the teeniest, tiniest, like literally not even, if you can see there, like the tiniest little tip into some wax. And we just, we're just trying out like layering and stuff, experimenting. But when this dries, we'll be able to see what color it dries as. So the peach candles are going to be pink and then the coconut candles are going to be green and the blueberry cheesecake candles will be blue, but they'll all be super pastel. So we've got to test all the colors and see how they turn out. Okay, Millie and Tiasha are heading off. So they have finished helping making the candles. So when you guys are there on the day buying them, the little pink ones and the holographic ones were made with love by the marshmallow girls ah. so uh if you're coming you will see these guys at the event mm -hmm. and uh, thank you guys so much for helping of course that was Same lots time. of fun that okay. was so much fun that was so much fun Bye okay guys. back to it we do have dinner on the uh, stove at the same time as we're doing the candles, but I just wanted to talk you through what we're doing right now, which is picking the color for our peach scented candle. So I want it to be pink, but I want it to be very, very pastel pink. So the dye chips come as these little 
uh, funny shaped chips that are made of wax, a mix of wax and dye I believe. Normally it's one of these chips per 500 grams of wax to make it like a bright sort of colour. Obviously I want it to be a very pastel colour so I'm going very 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 slowly. So we have about 10 kilos of wax in this pot here. So far we've put in 7 chips. The colour is quite soft. Um, you can see it's a lot deeper in the pot and when it dries it looks much 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 lighter. That's what it looks like. I think that's a, a nice looking pastel pink but I reckon we pour one candle and see how it looks. Okay guys we are pouring our peach candles right now. As you can see they look a little bit dark here but the hope is that it will dry and it'll be a similar pink to the pink jars that we're using. This smells amazing. As we're pouring these, the whole place smells so incredible. The peach is one of my favorite fragrances. I think this one is gonna be a, a great success on the day. And also, I think in these jars, they just look really, really pretty. And it kind of looks like juice and you just, you just wanna drink it. <laughs> Lucy is heading off now, so thank you for being here literally all day. We got <laughs> it's here, so fine. We got here in the morning, what, what do you, you reckon we started at 10 or something like that? Probably, yeah, yeah around, around like 9.30, 10. 9 30, 10. 9 30, 10. Mm -hmm. It's 6 p.m. now, so oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it, that went by really quickly. It did, it actually did. It, it went so quickly. Yeah. Lucy's heading off, so when you guys come to the event, you'll be able to pick up a candle handmade by Lucy Livin. I, you can... <laughs> the ones that look bad, I did them. <laughs> Don't be silly. <laughs> that was Tiasha and Millie, remember? <laughs> oh, oh my god, <laughs> just threw them under the bus why they're not here. It's so, what they deserve. So if you want to find Lucy, her YouTube is Lucy Livin. Lucy Livin! Let's and uh, her Instagram is Lucy.Livin. <laughs> And I will put the links to her YouTube and her I'm Instagram. Sorry, I'm like high off candle fumes. It's truly been a day. <laughs> I can see many colors. <laughs> new, new colors I've never seen before. Yeah, this this is actually a clear jar, but we're just so high on the I'm fumes. I'm just, wow. <laughs> Big yikes. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Go subscribe to Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. It's not how I would spend my time, but you're more than welcome to. A new helper has joined. Hello, Grace. Hello. What are you doing? A challenger approach. Polishing. Polishing. Polish. <laughs> All the candles. Cue some very, very sad music as I no, look at my candles, Alex. and I don't think they're pastel enough. And everyone else here seems to think that they are. They are not as pastel as I wanted. I mean, they're, they're, they're still pink, which is nice, but I wanted it to be like a very peachy, a soft peachy pink, and now it's more of a, I mean, I don't know, what would you call that? Bubble gum, do you reckon, Grace? Pretty pink. A pretty pink. I would say like a bubble gum kind of pink. They still look cute, but they're just, you guys know me. You know how fussy I am about my pastel colors. Okay guys, so we moved on to the blue of, uh, for the blueberry cheesecake and look at the difference that one colour chip made compared to, we had to put seven colour chips in for that pink. Look at what one blue colour chip turned it into. Yeah. That's, how, that's how dark it is. Call it one or at least in the pot, that's how dark it is. But there is a plus side to this because we have a little test colour in the freezer here, just drying off quickly so I can show you. Here it is. That's how light the blue is. Alex, you so, missed your opportunity. What do you mean? Drying off, you mean chilling out. Ch chilling out <laughs> in the freezer. So, Sam and I are doing a little experiment right now because I was thinking I could possibly put like a very light purple or something on the top of that pink candle to make it look like ice cream or something like that. So we're just, we're gonna do an experiment and if it doesn't look any good, we'll just leave it how it is. Okay, so we have our little purple one. I don't know if you'll be able to tell in this lighting, but there's the blue and the purple. The purple looks quite pretty. So my logic was I could potentially, cause I'm not hugely happy with the pink. I could put a little bit of purple on top of the pink to make it a little bit prettier. But everyone here is telling me I'm crazy. Everyone's like, the pink looks nice, Alex, leave it the way it is. Am I crazy? Are these candles nice, even though I think they're too pink? Do let me know what you think, but it won't, it won't help for the charity event. But if we do candles again in the future, it will help for that. So uh, anyway, now we're moving on to the blueberry cheesecake. It we have so good. It does, doesn't it? <gasps> we have our, our pot here. This is all blueberry in here. It looks very, very dark, but it will set 
just like this one. How pretty does that look with that purple one there and the little bit of blue and the pink? So I'm gonna start doing some purple candles as well. So it'll be like a pastel rainbow. Not that the pink is pastel enough, but anyway, that's, that's enough complaining from me. Let's pour some blue candles. Wow, look. It looks green. It looks green. Sam's just starting oh, to pour the blueberry cheesecake. I know why. Why? Because as I was, so the blueberry cheesecake fragrance oil, it's yellow. Is it yellow? It's, it's oh, got a wait, yellow tone wait, to it. A, well, hang on. So the blueberry... Don't, blueberry. we can't pour too many in that case. We've got to wait and see what that looks like when it dries. I reckon... Wow, that colour is still kind of cool, but it's definitely green. This is the first time we're using colours. Obviously, I'm using colours because it's the pretty pastel party and I wanted a bunch of pastel candles, but we didn't really consider that, that the, the fragrance oil is coloured. Hmm. We will report back when this dries. This is what it was meant to look like. It is now green. Well guys, it's uh, 10 p.m. and we're still going. Our predicament with the color situation is that this is what our blueberry cheesecake candles look like now that we've added the fragrance, which is a little bit yellow and it has turned the blue color into green. So... Archie green. Archie green. Archie green. <laughs> so for this next batch that we're doing, because we have 12 there that look too green. So we added a bit more blue into this batch to try and combat the yellow colour of the fragrance and that, my friends, is looking promising. This has just come out of the freezer. Have a look at that. That is what this is about to dry to look like. So we have fixed the problem. All we had to do was add a bit more blue. So the blueberry cheesecake fragrance is going to still be blue. I have just taken to Instagram to ask the very important question of, do you prefer the candle with a little bit of purple on the top of it, or do you like it when it's only pink? Because this is the predicament we're left with at 10.45 p.m. We've got to go through before we pack these up. We do have to top them. So my question to everyone was, should I top it with purple or should I top it with pink? Now, it's only been up for a couple of minutes on my story, and I'm just gonna have a look. We've got, so far, 148 votes for purple on top and 86 votes for pink on, like, just leaving it all pink. That's 63% of people are saying purple on top, 37% saying keep it all pink. Okay, oh, this is, this is nerve-wracking because we've got to make these decisions. So, we, um, I don't even know what time it is, wait. I can tell you, Alex, for free. I can tell you that I know that you've been asleep for three hours. Yeah, look, we did the right thing. 4,154 people said vote for purple on top. 1,975 said leave it as pink. So I feel like we've probably, we've probably done the right thing. We covered most of them in some purple. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Oh. I think that's all we can physically muster this evening. We worked from 10 a.m. until 1 a.m. What's that? 10... <sighs> my brain isn't working. To what's 10 a.m. to 1 a.m.? 15. So we worked for 15 hours. So I think we put in a pretty solid effort. So we will resume in the morning and then we are going to have to pick up again in a couple of days time when we pick up some more supplies because so many people are now talking about buying these uh, on my Instagram story. I've probably got about, I don't know, a thousand people now saying that they want to buy them. So I'm going to have to buy some more stuff and pick this up in the, later during the week. But I'll also be busy trying to organize the event and everything in that time. So I think this is going to be a very, very stressful and busy week for me, but I think it's definitely going to be worth it. Morning guys. So uh, we usually make the candles outside, obviously because of lots of fumes and ventilation. The fragrances smell very, very, very strong. So you can't really do it inside. Uh, and today, if you have a look at behind me there, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but look how smoky it is. This, look at that. I mean, we don't have a bushfire for like, I reckon, I reckon the closest one's probably 20 kilometers away, but that's how much smoke this whole place is covered in. I've been out here just um, getting boxes and stuff ready and my throat is already sore. Uh, not the best conditions today to set up our little candle making station, but uh, 
Anyway, I'll see how things go for the rest of the day if it clears up a bit and I'll report back. <laughs> I'm uh, on to the two last candles now. So I'm working on the green colour for the coconut and lime. Once I get the colour right, I'll be putting in the fragrance and pouring those. And then that's almost everything aside from uh, the last minute addition that I'm going to add, which is one of the best fragrances ever. It's frankincense and myrrh. And I'm going to make those purple because that's my favourite colour. And I think that the purple will look really pretty in the very big jars. Okay guys, so see this? This is one hour's worth of work right here of testing different coloured uh, green shades. So basically I've just been adding chip by chip and then pouring a little bit into a mould and letting it dry because it, you don't know what colour it looks like until it's dry. So I have added uh, nine chips so far and this is what it looks like. So it's still way, way, way too pale, but I don't want to go adding two chips at once because that's how the pink ended up way too pink because we were like, hmm, this is taking too long. Let's put in three pink chips and then it suddenly, suddenly became neon pink. So uh, this has taken an hour since you last saw me just to get it to this shade of green. So I'm going to add one more chip and see how we go, but hopefully I will have this figured out soon. Good morning guys, the time has finally come. Yes, I went all through the night adding one green chip an hour and now it's 10 a.m. No, not really, I, I gave up and I went to sleep because I just, I couldn't get it to be the right shade of green. So I've added 10 more chips just in one go in the hopes that I will finally get some green color and not just the normal color of the wax. So I'm running out of patience really. I feel like it's, it's, okay if it's a very soft green but just as long as you can tell that it is green because I mean in here you can see it, it looks green in there that does look green definitely time to pour our coconut and lime I've put my fragrance in here it smells absolutely amazing like I said before this is the fragrance that we had at our wedding we gave out little candles like this at our wedding and uh, it's like a really easy scent everyone seems to like it sometimes with sweet scents not everyone likes them Everyone seems to like coconut and lime. So I think that this one should be a hit on the day. Ready? Are um, we ready? Yeah. Well, that's yeah. green. That's definitely green. But remember, it always starts off looking darker and then it lightens up as it dries. That so looks like lime cordial. It does definitely look like lime cordial. Well guys, I'm very, very happy. The green has turned out exactly how I wanted it. It's a very, very pastel green. That is what patience gets you, adding one dye chip at a time for 10 hours. I think the thing is, when you're working with quantities of wax, if you measure out your wax, and then let's say you're using dye chips, for example, and you're wanting to get a specific color. As long as you keep track of how many chips it takes you, then you can recreate that color. So I know the volume of wax that I had in the bucket at the time, and I used 20 dye chips for that volume of wax to achieve this color. So now I know, next time I go to recreate coconut and lime candles with this color scheme, I can do it. Anyway, that's all these done. What I've been doing while I've been waiting for these to set is I was also pouring some of the purple frankincense and myrrh candles. I'm so excited about these. This is my favorite sized candle. I love it. I love the twin wicks. I love how long they burn for. You can probably get like a hundred hours burn time out of that. So you can just burn it every day. And the color this is going to set to be the most beautiful soft shade of purple. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. And then once all of those dry, I can show you the full collection. All right guys, well, I'm basically done. I have essentially poured every candle that I need to pour. All I need to do now is go around and clean up the jars. I need to top some of them off to give them a nice polished surface. Uh, we're going to box them up. We've got to put warning labels on the bottom. You know, warnings like uh, do not burn outside on a 40 degree Australian day in bushfire season, things like that. Anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching. If you're coming to the event, it's going to be in Chatswood at the concourse. It's at the Civic Pavilion and we're starting at 9am and we're going until about 5pm. Now, uh, I've put up an Eventbrite event online, so we're going to have candles for sale, there'll be clothing, shoes, accessories, artwork, baked goods, all sorts of things. We're going to have a photo booth, we're going to have a caricature artist. It's going to be a really fun day and I can't wait to see you guys there. I've been contacted by a lot of people overseas saying that they want to buy our candles. 
The only issue is it's very, very expensive to ship a candle overseas. To give you an idea, I looked into it. If I was to post one of these candles to America, it would cost $40 in shipping. So that's absolutely crazy. You don't want to do that. The issue is because candles are just so heavy, it's so hard to ship them overseas. Much cheaper to ship them within Australia. If I was going to post one of these from Sydney to Melbourne, it would probably be about 10 or $15. But yeah, anywhere like America or the UK, Europe, it's going to be $40 at least just to post one candle, which is, that's not me marking that up. That's me going on a courier website and putting the weight of the candle and that's the price they give me. So anyway, if, if candle making is something you guys are really interested in and, um, you know, going forward after the fundraiser, if you guys wanted me to make candles and sell them, I would love to do it, but I'd definitely have to investigate and see how I could get them to my international audience without them having to pay too much in shipping. It may even mean having to put the price up a little bit on the candles so it kind of averages out. Uh, I'll, I'll do some research. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments down below. But anyway, with that, that's as far as we go for the charity event candles. I'll just tell you quickly what we've got. Uh, we have obviously coconut and lime, which are going to be the green ones. The iridescent ones are butterscotch. The little pink ones at the front are butterscotch. We've also got a blueberry cheesecake. Some of the blueberry cheesecake candles have purple on top and some of them have white on top because I figured it would look a little bit like frosting and then the pink ones are peach and then the purple ones are frankincense and myrrh so the fragrances we have are butterscotch, coconut and lime, peach, blueberry cheesecake and frankincense and myrrh. They're my favorite fragrances. Uh, I obviously tried to go for really really sweet ones for this event but you know in the future if I'm gonna keep making candles I will definitely have like a florally fragrance I'll have sweet ones I'll have citrusy ones I'll have clean fresh ones but anyway I hope you guys like this video I hope that you enjoyed our shenanigans on day one and uh, tell me what you think about them in the comments down below if you like how they turned out I'm really happy with this last batch with the purple and the green that they're very pastel and they look great. Obviously I told you I'm not happy with how the pinks turned out. Let me know what you think of them. I just wish they were a lot lighter. But you know, I guess when you look at all of them together with the pink next to the purple, next to the green, it still looks quite nice. But anyway, that's it. That's enough rambling. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're coming to the fundraising event, I can't wait to see you there. And uh, also, thank you so much to everyone that's donated on the GoFundMe that I set up. We've raised over $12,000 now. That's absolutely insane. I can't thank you enough. There's been a lot of donations coming in from overseas and we really appreciate it here in Australia. We need all the help we can get. It's been absolutely devastating and the money, it's not going to bring back the wildlife that we've lost, but it's definitely going to go towards rehabilitating those that have survived the fires and also helping to rebuild the habitats. It'll also be going towards people that have lost their homes, going toward the firefighters that have been working every single day fighting the fires and they're not getting paid to do it. So um, I've mentioned this before, but uh, with the GoFundMe money and the money that we raise at the event, I want your opinions as to how you want me to split it up. I live in New South Wales and New South Wales has been the most popular state as far as donations go. New South Wales has definitely raised the most in funds, but that doesn't mean that the other states in the country haven't been affected as badly. You know, Victoria, for example, and Queensland, South Australia, they've all had devastating fires everywhere. So when I see how much money we raise, I'm going to try and divide it up between the states and I'm going to try and divide it fairly. And I want it to go between wildlife and people, uh, the victims of the fires, the firefighters. So let me know in the comments down below how you'd like to see the money divided if you've donated. Uh, express your opinion and I'm going to have a look over what everyone thinks. I think we can probably agree most of us want to see it go toward wildlife, but then again, there are definitely people out there that need it too, so I've got a lot of thinking to do once the event is over and done with, and I can let you guys know how much we raised in total, and then we can start to do some serious thinking and figure out how we want to divide it all up. But anyway, as far as the candles go, I reckon we could raise at least five, maybe five thousand dollars or so from the sales of the candles, I hope. I think it could even go further than that. Obviously the goal of this is to try and raise as much as we possibly can for the bushfire relief charities. So uh, head to the GoFundMe, head to the event page if you want to book in a time slot to come see me on Saturday. And with that, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Mwah!